hey, if you, take, if you step foot on that field, you're accountable to everybody out here to be ready to go. And we got to make sure you're ready or we can't put you out there. If you're a vet and you're being counted on, then by God, be a vet. Be a guy's dependable. So coming here was a, a good transition, smooth transition, because it was already some of the things I was used to. Hard no, just work ethic, uh, just coming every day to work, and just being focused, you know, going to class, being on time for everything. When I got here, uh, welcome to open arms, you know, click with the guys really easy. You know, the guys really, you know, liked me from the start, so that was uh, very easy for me, uh, good for me. Training my ankle uh, early on was, you know, kind of devastating to me because, you know, I just wanted to come out and make an impact, you know, for the team. but. You know, I just stayed positive and just stayed down and kept working. So, you know, I just try to make every opportunity count. You know, every opportunity that I get, you know, I try my best to just take advantage of every one that I get. It was amazing. I kid you not. One of the best feelings to feel, you know, not getting to finally get into the end zone, the way you just turn and you know, made the best of it. So that was an amazing, uh, amazing feeling, just hearing the fans cheer you on, your teammates celebrating, your coaches are happy. So I definitely say we have some loyal fans. That's a great feeling knowing that your fans are behind you, you know, no matter what the what the record shows. Pirates, are you ready? Coach Williams, everybody calls Coach Big John, and I'm the Director of Strength and Conditioning here at East Carolina, head strength coach for the football team. From the director standpoint, I oversee the sports performance training and sports nutrition for all the teams on campus. And as the head strength coach for football, I oversee all the development and growth for the football team. As a staff, I have nine strength and conditioning coaches. Of those nine, four full-time will be with me to make the five permissible uh, football strength coaches. And those five will be including myself, Coach Asher Farmer, Coach John Kusherman, Mike Morris, and Amos Wilson. Each one of my staff members are in like minds, but each one has a different characteristic. You know, we have some guys that are a little more rah-rah, like I mean, Coach Mike, you know, if this is the line, this is Mike Morris, okay? Then you've got Coach Amos, who's been a director at Del Valley, they've won a lot of games. Uh, he knows how to deal with the masses of people and he is ultra positive, ultra spiritual. It's a great day to be a live coach. It's four o'clock in the morning and I get to be a strength and conditioning coach. And then you got Coach Kusuman, who is just a warrior football player, who is an excellent strength and conditioning you know, specialist, but he has a level of intensity when it's time to work that guys can relate to and see themselves do that. Then you got Coach Farmer. He's a master of a lot of things, but emotion is not one of them. He's mostly blank faced, but guy, but probably, a, you know, he's a licensed, you know, their behavioralist. I mean, he, he's got a lot of things, a master's of science in a bunch of areas. And, but a lot of kids migrate to him because he's been through a lot of things they went through and he's calm and patient. And then this is me, I have, you know, I touch everybody. Um, but often when they see me, they see the likeness of Coach Houston because I'm carrying the culture of the team through my messages. And that's not because it's just in the book, it's because it's what I believe. And that's the foundation of why kids come in all the time. We call it the football factory. We just had you know, a couple guys go work your biceps and traps and then some dudes come in and get mobility. Some guys will come in and get some abs and some guys want to be more powerful. And we still have those evaluations individually throughout the entire season. And then obviously, you know, the developmental group guys that are going to red shirt or and or have walked on and it's just really trying to just overall have general preparation and growth. When you see Coach Houston, you know what he stands for. And that's how he conveys it regularly to us as a staff. But here in the area of strength and conditioning, <clears throat> I try to simplify it and say, guess what, man? Better people make better players. And we want to invest into the people. And he is 100% on board with our approach of investing to the people to carry on to the culture. Because all of the things in our culture, all the things that he says are pillars of our program, are things that you can carry into life. 
So that is easy for us. It's very seamless for us as a staff to carry those traits through when we train. You know, adversity, uh, how to handle success, uh, making goals, you know, those things. Time, place, and execution is a major thing in here. Like when we start workouts, guys know we start at five till. What does that translate to? That translates to coming to work on time. Okay, being on time and in place. Well, execution. You go in and you grab your cards. Each card, each kid has a name on the card with their percentages, their weight, their expectation. What does that translate? Know what you're going to do that day when you get to work, right? And then expectations of what the standards are, and that is what we, you know, regurgitate all the time through that. And so, how does he communicate that to me? Again, you know, we have one-on-ones all the time. Uh, he works out all the time, so many times it's very convenient. He just comes right in here after his workout. I think often just to kind of show me his muscles and, you know, flaunt them in my face, but you know, that's all good. Um, but <laughs> on a serious note though, we have a very intimate relationship from goal setting. He is very passionate about building better people. He wants his young men to succeed in life beyond football because the little brown ball for both of us has created so many opportunities. And that's the big picture, that's challenging. As a head coach, that's challenging. He's CEO of so many things. I mean, he operates over 300 things that has to cross his desk. So in my role, I try to take that one thing away from him. Like if he has to come do my job, then it's not necessary for me to be here. So he has built a trust relationship with me through consistency of time, place, and execution. I keep him informed of everything forward, and I make sure that I'm in line with the culture of the program. So, you know, having a brief flashback, mirror reflection, there were a lot of things that we had to deal with coming here. <clears throat> but I think that that was more than just a talent thing. Again, it was a character thing. And you can find great football players with great character. You see them here, they're around the walls, right there around the little borders of that stadium. So they do exist and we demand that. And we make you figure it out. Because why? Our expectations don't change. No matter what your circumstances are, we expect you to have time, place, and execution. Unfortunately for you guys, everybody watching social media, you think you'd get great in two minutes. It can't. It's a culmination of hundreds of two minutes. You gotta get the effort every day. So let's finish this day. They keep us in shape mentally as well as physically, but Big John does a great job of just keeping our minds focused on just you know the next play or the, the next game and just keeping us together as a group and keeping us together as a family. So shout out to Big John for that. Um, he's a great guy and he keep everybody uh, everybody together. The philosophy of management, that's what we're talking about overall, the management of body composition, mass indexes, those things. Those are going to be based, performance based deals. So we have the metrics of evaluations, and right now our standard evaluations are in line with what the kids can communicate and relate to the NFL combine, and this, those things translate into actual movements. Exact uh, example of defensive linemen is really a common body type that people see, whether they're over or under, what their body comps are in relation to a high performance. So we take a 5-10-5 and we have a pre-evaluation for our 5-10-5 movement and then we go through a training cycle of about four and a half weeks and then we take another evaluation. Based off the first one, we look at if there's decrease in time, increase in time, and if there is plus or minus, is that because the efficacy of movement? Because we teach training of a movement as well, and then we match that with body composition and body weight. We take that information, take it over to the football coaches, uh, sitting with the head coach. Usually we start with the coordinator. This time we talk about a defensive tackle, it would be with Coach Harrell. Uh, we sit with Coach Harrell. Coach Harrell obviously we'll had a predetermined conversation with Coach Tess. What do you want your guys to do? Can they do it in this mass concept? Boom, okay, this guy, we think that he can improve his performance, let's say general term, losing some weight. How do we go about doing that? We're really in Christina. So Christina comes in, 
We talk about our goals. This, this uh, common number is around 10 pounds is what people are comfortable with, but that's 10 pounds over six to eight weeks that we're trying to lose so we won't lose any body mass or muscle mass, okay? And then we'll come up with a food plan based on the resources that we have, whether it's the training table or some supplemental meals or we have the Mucho apps. Uh, we teach them how to do grocery if you get a substance check, you know, type of deal. We'll teach them how to shop to meet those goals. And then we have check-in points along the way for everyone. And then replay the same cycle. We take another four or five some weeks, take the evaluation, see if it matches the metric, have those same conversations, and then reload. Don't forget about your teammate. Never let selfishness disguise itself amongst us because we cannot separate. No matter where you came from, you and the pirate gear now, we family, period. End of discussion. I collected a lot of information along the way <clears throat> and experience-wise, uh, just seeing different people in the profession, um, having great experiences. I mean, you know, at the schools that I worked, attended and worked for along the way. And so what I brought back to this is, greatness is achievable no matter what your resources are. Because I've won on every level, from FCS, you used to call it BCS, now it's you know D1, national, whatever bracket they call it. But when you bring it back to the hometown feel, it's like you know the secret sauce is collectiveness. The secret sauce is that we got to unify our strengths of our, our community and work for the same goal. We got to push back against position because I have some really good connections here, really good friends, people that, you know, understand me that I'm not the most social butterfly out there, you know, and they still support East Carolina, they support Coach Williams, they support Mike Houston, they support the program and the thing I brought back, you know, you asked me what I bring back, that's, that's kind of a un unique question because I bring back a lot of things. You know, a lot of different experiences to get me where I'm at and to where I feel like I can maximize, you know, this opportunity. Because one of the people I was under in that journey was Jeff Connors. And Coach Connors showed me a lot about loyalty and intensity, planning and training. But he also showed me about how to be with your feet, ten toes down where you are. And I took that approach everywhere I went. And then now I'm back home, you know, I'm 10 toes down through my ankles. But I believe everybody here is like that. You know, all the support systems here is all about the ECU family. And I think that can be what can change the game for our programs all across the board is that family concept. Because um, it's, it's unique. It's not like that everywhere. And so that's what I really be like is the knowledge that it's not like that everywhere. And the people that are ECU, you know, my sister, my wife, my cousin, all these ECU graduates, my uncles, my cousin, cadets, all these people, they love East Carolina and they will bleed purple and they will lay themselves down in front of a train if you ask them to, if it's going to be better for the program. But we have to make sure that we ask them to if we need to and we got to be willing to lay right beside them. When you turn on the film and you watch yourself, what do you see? When you truly look at it, what do you see? What do you see on game day? What do you see on Tuesday? Then what do you see the next day? Because the guy that can be depended on on game day, when does he show up? Every day. Every day he shows up. You ain't got you ain't got to question it. You ain't got to worry about it. The guy that shows up one day and doesn't show up the next day, that guy's the one that gets your ass beat on game day because he's the one that's inconsistent with his play. We continue to work and just focus on just making the next play and making it to the next game and just staying together. That's the biggest thing is just staying positive as a group and just continuing to work.